Hey y'all, this is Matt here with Hawkins Fly Fishing. I'll um, be showing you how to tie a clouser minnow today. Um, this is actually a craft fur clouser. It uses uh, just the synthetic fur material called craft fur. Um, you can tie them out a bucktail if you prefer, but this is a pretty small clouser. We'll be tying a number six today. Um, so, I, uh, whenever it's these smaller guys, I really like using this craft fur. Um, it's almost white bass season here in Arkansas, and these are the fly I'll use on white bass, but they work good on largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, uh, crappie, bluegill, whatever you want to throw them at, really, you can catch on a clouser, or some variation of it. <clears throat> so, excuse me. What we'll be tying on today, what hook, is a 811 uh, saltwater hook by TM Co. in a size 6. And we're gonna get our thread started here. And I'm just using a red uh, six aught thread. You can use white, black, uh, really whatever color you want to use. Um, I'll use clear monofilament a lot of the time, and it'll take on whatever color I'm tying with. Excuse me. So we're gonna go ahead and lay down a base of thread, and we're gonna come about draw kind of a mental image between the hook point and the eye of the hook and we're going to come about a third of the way back and that's where we're going to put our eyes in and what we're going to be using for our eyes is this bead chain what you would use on a um, you'd use it on like a lamp or a fan um, you can get this at Lowe's, Walmart, you can get it at almost any store um, you could use hourglass eyes but on a clouser this small these, this bead chain works perfectly and I tie so many of them that it is a, um, it's a lot easier than having to buy that many lead hourglass eyes. So we're going to go ahead and attach our eyes using some X wraps. So I'm going to make a couple wraps that direction. I'm going to switch a couple wraps this direction. One more time the other way. One more time. And now I'm going to come around the base of them. And I'm going on top of the hook but under the eyes. And that just tightens up those previous wraps. Okay, so now we're going to go and come, come in front of the hook. And you can see I left quite a bit of room in front. You could even probably come put those back even farther if you want. So now the hook is actually going to ride inverted like that. So we want to put our lighter color on top. Um, most fish are what's called bilaterally colored. So that means the darker color is going to be on the top part of them. And the lighter color is going to be on the bottom. So we're going to take some white craft fur here. I'm going to cut off a nice little section. Don't have to go crazy with it, but I try to do probably a square inch of area is what I usually cut off. Alright, so I'm going to cut all that off there. So I have a nice little piece right here. You can see all this real thick under fur. We can't really tie that in because it's going to be really bulky. So I'm going to come and grab it by these longer fibers. I'm going to pull all that under fur out. Just like that. All that bulky under fur came out. Just throw that in the trash. I'm going to come in and make a nice even square cut. You can probably hear my cat in the background. I'm going to come in. Lay this uh, craft fur over the eye of the hook. I'm going to make one loose wrap. And what you can do is spin your spin your bobbin counterclockwise and that'll cause it your thread to jump back. I don't know if you can see that it makes it want to jump back. So we make that loose wrap, it's gonna jump back. So anyways, make one loose wrap, and I'm gonna pull that craft fur until it's right behind the eye of the hook, and I'm gonna tie it down with some nice tight wraps. I'm gonna lift that craft fur up, jump behind the eyes. Now tie that craft fur down. I'm going to make some spiraling wraps to the back of the hook. And now I'm just going to cover all that craft fur up. Oops. If you want to, you can stop right behind the eyes here and not cover it all up like I did there. But the uh, it tends to foul up on you and wrap around the hook, so I'll go ahead and tie it down to the hook shank. Okay, so now 
gonna we're gonna jump in front of the eyes. And we're gonna invert that hook. And I'm gonna take some flash material. You can use whatever flash material you want. This is just some pearlescent flashaboo. Oh, I usually will take about two or three fibers, maybe. I don't go. I don't do real heavy on the flash. So I got my three three fibers here. I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna double them over my thread. Double them over and I'm holding them. I'm gonna pull up on that material and pull down with my bobbin. That's gonna secure it on top. So now I'm just pulling that stuff back and I'm taking wraps over it. Just like that. We're just gonna get that guy to kind of splay out evenly around that hook point. Pull that back and then I usually cut it about the same length as the uh, craft fur. You can always come back and trim that later. Okay, so now we're almost done. Come in with some blue craft fur for the top wing. Again, about an inch square area. You're going to cut off. About, just about like that. I have all that under fur in there. I'm going to hold down. Pull out all that under fur. Throw that side. Come in, make a nice even cut, lay it over the hook, take a loose wrap, pull so it's not covering the hook, and then take some nice tight wraps to cover to secure that in. So now all we gotta do now, all we have to do is cover up the head, make a nice thread head and cover up all that craft fur. Nor the Norvice in action here. Okay, so now got that done, go ahead and whip finish. I'll usually do two, three turn whip finishes. Kind of a precaution, probably unnecessary. Cut that guy off. I come in with some uh, clear cure goo hydro. And all the uh, places where I, all the thread wraps, I'm going to cover up with this stuff. And this will make it almost bomb proof. Also gives it a nice shine too, which look, looks nice. I don't know if the fish can tell. Hit that with my UV light. Just like that, just a couple seconds. Okay, now we're ready to trim it. And I usually you can use any really hook on this. You can use any streamer hook you want. But for white bass, I try to keep it within about two and a half inches. So I'm just going to come in and kind of cut it at an angle. Just so it kind of tapers. And you can see it's probably about two and a half times, three times the length of the hook. This is a pretty short shanked hook though. And that's really all there is to Tom Klauser. Hope you guys like it. Thanks.